Okay, so how do you create cinematic lighting? There is a couple things to think about. This could be a little bit dark, right? Uh, sometimes if you just have this background light, it could be kind of nice, but instead, let's look at what it would look like if we just lit the whole room. This would be like my basic studio lighting if I want daylight, or just light it like this. And I mean, it, it works and everything, but there's a couple of things that we can do. First of all, you need to maybe block out sunlight. Now it's dark outside because Sweden doesn't have any light, but let's just put it up just in case we might get some sunrise soon. These are just like reflector type of stuff. I just put these up on the window just so I could control the light a little bit better. But then let's just dump this one. Uh, that's not a nice light at all. This is a little bit better. I got a light coming from the side and the reason why like this side is better than just having like front lit is because you want to create a uh, depth in a shot. So usually you want to think about like the layers being a background, a mid layer and a foreground layer. Now in this shot we don't really have a foreground layer. The foreground layer could be anything like a flower in a little bit blurry in front of the lens or something like that but it could also be what's on this table here that you're not seeing in in this shot that's the close-up okay so cinematic light it comes down to what's right for the story what enhances the audience uh, immersion into the story what makes them feel like they're in that place feeling the emotions so when you tell a story you should really think about like how do you emphasize the emotions that you're trying to tell but also like it's about creating a mood i think that when you shoot docs you're a slave under you know reality you can't like work with all the pretty lights that you can if you work just a studio or a fiction narrative type of style film so you need to kind of emphasize what you already have there so working with the characters as a cinematic um, factor like trying to get characters that can actually bring something to the table in terms of making something cinematic is crucial if you want to create cinematic lighting so it doesn't start with the lighting at all it starts long before that with the costing process the locations all those things are super important to create nice cinematic lighting and then you need to adapt to the reality that you're in uh, you might think like oh that's the natural light that's a practical that's on a uh, on a box that I just put there in the background first of all and then I added a second uh, let me just turn this fan off a little bit but then I also added a light there um, that's uh, just strengthening the yeah the whole look on the wall so it's boosting that color temperature so then you have to have uh, tungsten uh, temperature wise uh, to boost that because it's a warm color and then in the ceiling i have a little led that just sh shoots some uh, 5000 i don't know what it can be probably closer to like seven or uh, six thousand uh, kelvin in temperature and that's just to give a little bit of the cold background and the reason why you do that is to kind of accentuate me and and create depth in the light so i'm trying to boost myself or to separate myself from the background um, just by using colors and light so the practical there creates like a depth in terms of like stretching out the light that's in my face out to the background but then the blue in the background that kind of makes it uh, a separation from myself being a little bit warmer i'm not warm or anything this is like 5600 so it's just uh, that it's a little bit uh, neutral in my face but then you have another thing which is this slide over here that i would just turn up a little bit uh, and you could just do it a tiny tiny bit 
just to get a little bit of what's up oh the cable wasn't in <laughs> we'll do it okay so this is the minimum so the reason why I have this one is that this can be used to get a little bit shine in the eyes which is usually a trick that you want to use if you want to have uh, people be very dark if you can you want to have a little bit of light that pops the eye so I think that you can see it I can't really see it myself but this is just an interesting uh, concept to light the eyes because as soon as you get like a little bit of pop and that means like what you're going for is pretty much the reflection that it's creating so the reflection it's creating in the eyes uh, this one is also creating some reflection so you will get that uh, with just having a big light source uh, close to the person but the reason why you want to do it is so that you get some life into people's eyes yeah. and it could be a flashlight or anything it could also be the big like catch lights that creates uh, nice looking uh, images like that um, I would also think that that's the only way that I would want to use a ring light is just to get some pop in people's eyes uh, it's not to light a face because that would just ruin everything in a face all the features and everything so this is like the the basic setup here but this is just for an interview that you could control this is how you would go about like creating a more cinematic type of setup uh, but something like this might be kind of hard to do when you're on a set trying to shoot something uh, for a documentary because here you have like okay this table is put here because it puts me in the right place for the background I move the skateboards around so I just put up two I have another one on the ground but usually they're up there uh, I thought the one was kind of making it a little bit uh, not nice symmetry uh, so I took that away the bike is usually mounted on this thing here now it's down on the background uh, to get the most out of any situation you need to think about like how can you rearrange uh, place and for docs it's a bit limiting because you ha don't have time and you can't like do anything to a room but you generally want to find the best place or arrange for the best place to do if it is an interview or if it is a scene where you can kind of direct the action somehow you want to try to do that for the best lighting scenario that you can can start from so in this case it's the background first of all what do you want in the background think about that and then try to light that and then position the person as well uh, and start lighting that and this one could just as well be moved this light uh, it could also be uh, changed a bit i mean i could take it down it could probably be somewhere around here it would still be nice looking you just need something to happen for it to, to become an image and, and everything because when you're around here like if you have a person this might work if it's like a scene where you want something special but I would not think so so much <laughs> I think the least you could go you could probably go down to like the minimum but you still would like something to happen yeah so something like this this is fine like this would work perfectly I think if you want to have this type of moody uh, looking image but this is just a little bit too intentional or unintentional <sighs> yeah so the first thing you need to think about is the ISO setting you need to work with the camera you have so for the pocket cinema camera that I'm using you want to be around like 100 to 400 to get clean images or 1250 you could go 1250 to 2000 as well but I would try to stay around 1250 because those are the cleanest yeah. and if you do that then you're working with the camera's limitations rather than against it if you're on a Sony series camera like the A7 series don't be fooled by thinking like just because it can go high ISO it's going to create the same cinematic images like a pocket or 
for instance, a RED or Alexa, that's not the case. You need to figure out where the images out of the camera looks the most cinematic and natural because there's a lot of in-processing going on in those cameras. But for instance, if you have a RED or Alexa or a pocket cinema camera, you can actually push it in a different way. So because it's raw and very uncompressed, you can actually do in-camera grain rather than doing it in post and make it look natural. That's very hard with cheaper looking cameras. Uh, so I've pushed it to like 1250, no, 12,800 ISO or whatever it is, uh, and try to get an in-camera noise look that looks like Super 8. Looks really good, I think. So that's not possible with the more digital processing type of cameras like the A7 series or yeah, GH5 whatever it is that has a lot of in-camera stuff going on. So know your camera's ISO limitations. Think about how you can create depth into a shot. Like what's the best way for you to actually create depth that works uh, in a scene? The more you can kind of separate and work with colors, the more you can work with light, you usually want to look at like what practical source do you have. For docs this is crucial I think. Can you move practicals around in a simple way? And usually I try to keep one key light. In this case it's that light over there uh, and then I don't have anything else. The rest comes down to like lighting the room pretty much. So for me uh, directional light is kind of nice to have uh, but um, most of the time I, I just have like a small uh, LED like this one which is the two footer from BBS systems or I have the uh, one footer from BBS systems as well on this light uh, or the Westcott flex lights. The flex lights are actually really good if you want to create um, a flyer of some sort where you have a second person booming the thing that's a perfect scenario for me having somebody boom the light and, and it be being, being movable uh, all around and you can just tell the person that's holding the light on a boom uh, pole to just come from the side a little bit uh, that i think is the best scenario but i don't always always have that but when i have for instance for uh, when we do advertising or when we have like more planned shoots then i always prefer to go that way because it's so flexible and then when you look at a scene like this you should really think about like okay so the background what strength is the light so first of all you need to expose like from the light in the background how do you expose so that that one is is right uh, and then go from there to light me you shouldn't start with the person that you're trying to light in terms of like the strength you should always start with the background what you want visible in the background how strong does that need to be? For instance, if you're shooting towards a window, how much do you need to dial down the exposure to get the exposure you want out of the window? And then you need to bring in lights to light the source in the foreground to compensate for that. And that's when you might run out of light or not have strong enough lights. So then maybe you can't shoot against the window. Maybe you need to twist it a little bit. <laughs> so a year ago, I lost my iPhone by that tree over there. Anyway, thought that was funny. If you haven't seen the film, go check it out. It's kind of fun. An important thing is to think about the space that you're in, because it's not all about lighting to create great cinematic lighting. You need to be uh, thinking about the space all the time because you're always going to be a slave to what environment you're in. So what story are you trying to tell? How are you trying to use the environment to tell that story? So for instance, if you're in a small uh, s uh, like operating room that we were in, uh, in the Pearl of Africa, trying to compress that to make it more intimate, you can do that. Or if you're trying to tell like a story about a place uh, which is going through a mining conflict, maybe then you want to have more wide shots to th show like the conflict through the, the environment. You need to think about how are you using the space before you start lighting and if you're going to compress the space or if you want to use it the wide uh, space that you're in because that will dictate like what time of day do you shoot how do you use the 3d depth that i'm talking about 
how do you do that through color contrast? In this case, it's a little bit warmer here or neutral here. And then you have a little bit blue background. And then you have the light there in the background, which is also a little bit more of the warmer side. I think that you need to think about the temperatures in, and how you work with them rather than thinking like, they, oh, we only should use uh, 5,600. No, 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 color contrast is everything. How do you work with that? How do you make an image pop or how do you make stuff on location rather than having to grade things in the post? Like this, for instance, the blue in the background and me a bit neutral in the foreground and working with the warm and the cold and, and all that that can also separate the layers that i'm talking about that make for a more 3d depth image which is crucial if you want to make something cinematic so play around with that don't be afraid of using colors i love the cyan for instance that color is amazing for me uh, you can't use it for anything but otherwise just learn how to play with like 5600 and 3200 kelvin and make those play well together and then you're gonna make a much more interesting image if you work with that color contrast because it's not all about like the the contrast in itself like the black and the and the white that's not everything like there's so much more to contrast than that uh, yeah and, and try to use them for your uh, image to make it pop oh, man so freaking dreamy. Do you see all this? So much snow. Like, I love living in Sweden. You should come sometime. I'll take you out skiing. Another thing to consider is the edge light. How can you use that to uh, accentuate the character? Let me just turn a light on and I can show you. So if you have something like this, you could just get a rim on somebody. Oh, let me just put this up. Hold. Okay, so here you can see you get a little bit of the edge of my uh, on my shirt this is a really nice way of working I think even if you turn this off you would actually have something going on I, I would think that you would want some of this but maybe you can turn this to the minimal um, somewhere around here maybe uh, ish could work but then you have that light to accentuate and, and to kind of separate the character from the background which i think is is super important but if you turn this off you would turn this on a little bit more this would also be fine you don't have to light the faces and everything so that you see everything i think that's like a, a very much a rookie mistake that people make they think that you need to see everything that's definitely not the case light for uh, the type of mood that you're going after do not light for uh, the way that Hollywood films look. Just one way of doing it. You could uh, work with like backlights in all sorts of different ways, but I really like that way of working where you just kind of push something uh, to be more visible and separate things from the layers that I'm talking about. Uh oh. I wonder if I can get past this. Huh, that is a big tree and that's a big slope. So there's, there was a storm, uh, I guess the day after New Year's uh, and there was like a lot of trees has fallen and nobody has actually picked them up yet. So I think I have to turn around, this sucks. If you for instance are having a lot of moving subjects or something, it's more important that you have high dynamic range and don't go too shallow on the depth of field. And also if you project stuff in the cinema, like very shallow depth of field, like 1.4 on a full frame, that's very close. Like it's so freaking close that you're gonna be wobbling your eyes when you watch it on the big screen. 
so you need to think about that as well like where is it going to be projected if it's on a phone then it might be called for because you can't see the depth of field in the same way but you need to consider that and then we start lighting one thing that's become really popular in terms of lighting is shooting into the shadows when you're shooting into the shadows you want something to happen in the background so let me just switch this one around and you can see what i mean if we push this okay so let's see we're shooting into the shadows a bit more now um something like this could even work like for this to actually be like a good scenario you need to have something happening in the background so you could go for like a shot like this where you don't have much light in my face you could also like do a little bit of more light uh, in my face but when you shoot into the shadows it's, it's usually something that you do with a minimal light source on the object or person that you're shooting but in the background you have something separating the different layers because if you don't have anything separating then it's just going to look really really dull and, and boring and it's just and nothing's going to happen so care about your background because that's pretty much like everything in an image like this is like something happening in the background if you didn't have that then nothing would happen this it makes for still a really nice looking image you have the little bit of edge light here you have a little bit of the, the catch light in the eyes here and then uh, you just have the background that's it and it's kind of hard to use lighting like this in a documentary scenario but i just thought that it's nice to kind of show you what people actually do when they light things and and have like any control that they could in a scenario sorry for the noise but we should probably talk about the moving light a little bit as well so there's a lot of moving lights that you can use. You could actually just do it yourself, but having moving lights can make stuff so freaking cinematic. You should always think about how can you do moving lights. Now this one, it doesn't like create that much of effect just by moving it around like this. But if you would add, for instance, some haze or something, you would get the whole strobe coming and, and being more like accentuated and all that so that's a really good way of working i think if you think about it you could just flick this around like i do this all the time in my stuff just trying to get like things to move and make them more cinematic if you can do this uh, you don't need like to move your camera and like be doing dollies and all that all the time you could just do like moving lights as well it could just be the background as well it doesn't have to be me that's that's being lit it could just be you doing something like that or i don't know man just play around with stuff and you can figure it out uh, yeah don't overdo it though quiet down please okay before i go let me know what do you want me to do in terms of cinematic lighting how do you light your stuff and also flick the notification button bell thingy so you know when i upload next time All right, see you.